I built a $600 gaming PC in the middle of a pandemic and it doesn't suck. My name is Chris, this is Coalition Gaming, and today I'll be your computer technician. There's no two ways about it. Building a PC right now is worse than trying to push your old beater of a car uphill during a snowstorm. Yeah, it's not gonna happen. Not even a few months ago, I put together a few Ryzen 3100 budget builds and they performed great for the money. I even did one with a full setup, including the monitor for $700 and it performed great. Safe to say, Ryzen is the golden child of recent times and for good reason. But this pandemic we're in has really changed things. And now that we're trying to build a competent budget gaming PC here in 2021, what do we end up with? Big Daddy Intel is back. Since Intel right now happens to have decent offerings for decent money, depending on the product range you're looking at, you would still end up with great performance for gaming or content creation or streaming or whatever. They didn't suddenly become bad processors that can't do anything, you know? So let's run down the specs and prices. For the CPU, we have, drum roll, the Intel i3-10100. This is a four core, eight thread part with a base frequency of 3.6 gigahertz and a turbo 4.3 gigahertz. AMD having forced Intel to eventually enable hyper threading across their entire core i series CPUs has really made the i3 a desirable budget gaming option again. And the benefit of this over a Ryzen 3 3100 is that it has integrated graphics, but at a similar price. Trust me, it comes in handy. For the motherboard, we have the MSI B460M Pro, a no frills micro ATX board that should do the trick. For RAM, we have a 16 gigabyte dual channel kit of 2666 megahertz Patriot Viper Elite. Power supply is an EVGA 500BR. Because I hate the stock Intel cooler, which I guess would be enough for this i3, I found a deep cool Gamax 400V2 for 20 bucks. Case is nothing crazy, but still should have a decent airflow. It's a Thermaltake Tech Versa H15 micro tower. And the reason for this style of case though is that the person that I'm actually building it for intends to use it as more of an office computer. Extra cooling will be provided by a pack of my favorite PWM fans, the Arctic F12 PWM PST. And storage is a crucial P2 500 gig NVMe SSD. All right, so let's add this up. CPU, $114.99, MOBO, $79.99, RAM, $69.99, PSU, $54.99, Cooler, $19.99, Case, $49.99, Fans, $20.99, SSD, $52.99. Total, $463.92. So I took these parts, fired up my Twitch stream, and got to building. Two 16 foot extensions running from my computer to the table over there. This is a hazard in here. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna stuff you under the fan. Just like the body from the other week. Add a PS1 to get better FPS. <laughs> Yes, it's booted. It's booted. It's booted. Woo! Clip that. Ah, but you might have noticed I left something out. One of the most problematic things to try to get right now, the graphics card. Depending on your budget, there are some options still. This system would be a great basis for a 1080p gaming rig. 
And with that, on a budget, I generally recommend something like an RX 470 or 570 from eBay. Sadly, even prices on those have gone up with them going around for 120 to 150 used when you could easily get them under $100 before. RX 480s and 580s are priced out of being completely worth it now, sadly. Same with GTX 1060s. However, GTX 970s are on eBay in the same price range as an RX 470 and 570 and on par with the performance of the 570, so that's definitely an option too. So let's take that 46392 and add a GTX 970. Cheapest I saw was about $125 shipped, and we had a total of 58892 With an RX 470, it also comes in about this price, give or take a few bucks. 1080p performance should be at least as good as the benchmarks covered in my $700 full setup build with the Ryzen 3 3100. So see how good that will do? Click right up here or find the link down in the description below. Now, if you ask me what GPU I'd ideally want to put in this system, a 1660 Super or a secondhand GTX 1070 since those are close in performance. A 1660 Super is supposed to cost $230, with some costing $240. After that, I'd avoid them. So let's take 46392 and add $240 to it, and we get 70392. Not bad at all. So let's see a few benchmarks of this system with the GTX 1660 Super. Eh? Wait, 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 wait. We have a problem. Of course, you can't get a 1660 Super for that $230 to $240 normal pricing anywhere right now. Like I said, a GTX 1070 performs about the same, and depending on your local market, you can get these for about the same cost as a 1660 Super. So anyways, this was just a small sample of 1660 Super Benchmarks. To see more, feel free to check out our full review of it linked up here and down in the description below. And so here we are. In this day and age, during a pandemic, with PC parts being either impossible to get or costing more than they ever have, a budget build like this is still possible and still great for gaming. If you guys wanted to check out any of these parts, I'll have links down below. Are you surprised Intel is back in the game like this for budget builds? Drop a comment down below. Let's talk about it. What parts would you choose? Well, parts that you could get at least. Anyways, if you like this video, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button and that bell so you don't miss a single upload. I stream to Twitch every Friday at 8 p.m. Pacific, link down below. So make sure to stop by, drop a follow, and let's talk some tech. Follow on all our socials, everything, again, link down below. So check down there for any of that stuff. We'll see you on the next video or on the stream. Click one of those. Drop a comment. I'll see you down there in the comments. I reply to comments all the time. Or just come by the stream, maybe. Yeah, we can talk live. Eh? Eh? Did you click one?